Hello, good afternoon, evening or morning, whichever it is for you in whatever part of the world you're at. Uh, welcome to the latest uh, Monogame Live Hangout. Um, we're very lucky today. We've got one of our, our core maintainers all the way from Brisbane, Australia. I think it's Brisbane you're in, is that right, Steve? Uh, yes, that's right. Hi, everyone. Uh, it's, uh, Brisbane here, it's four days away from winter and I'm still wearing t-shirts so that explains what the weather is like here. <laughs> I've been to Brisbane once before it was, it was a really lovely city if I remember rightly but um, <laughs> but yeah it does get a bit warm from what I remember. This year is especially strange. How come? Well usually by now it's definitely uh jumper or jack jacket time but this year it just hasn't happened yet <laughs> okay <laughs> so that'll be happening happening probably in a, in a few weeks in that case so maybe if you're on the next hangout we'll, we'll see you wearing a jumper and a coat <laughs> well yeah <laughs> possibly okay so um obviously we're going to talk about one game We've got a bunch of viewers on the line today. Just a, a quick reminder to people, we're here to answer your questions. If you have stuff you want to know about Monogame, uh, we've already had a hello in the question thing, so I'm just going to uh, mark that as, as done. Thanks, guys. Um, if you do have any questions, feel free to ask. We'll have a Q&A session at the end uh, where we're going through them. Today, this, this time round, we did a little bit of a poll and asked people what they wanted to hear about. And um, hopefully, we're going to give you something that you want to hear. Most people want to hear about tips and tricks, so we'll go and talk about that today. But I think the first thing we'll do is just wrap up what kind of things has been happening in Mono Game over the last month or so. So, Steve, has anything kind of caught your eye in the last month? What's been what's been going on? Uh, one of the things that uh, has seen quite a lot lot of work has been the uh, uh, content pipeline tool. Uh, Crazy or Harry has done a lot of work in that, in making it uh, making it consistent across all the desktop plat plat platforms. Uh, oh, okay. I have a little demo of it here that I will quickly run run th run through. Oh, excellent! Uh, I haven't actually seen this running because I'm I'm still running the uh, uh, three point five stable, so I don't know what Crazy's been up to. <laughs> Okay, so I will just run it here. So you can see it's got a slightly di different look. I'll open a recent file. So it's still the same light, light layout, the project up there, the properties down here. You'll see that the properties Window yeah, Steve, Steve, we can't actually see the pipeline tool. We can only see Visual Studio at the moment. Did you just share Visual Studio <laughs> by any chance? Ah, um, share your desktop. I, <clears throat> I, I launched it and it launched a different win window. <laughs> okay. Arco Hunter, um, we've got a question. Can we chat or can we only ask questions? Uh, there is a chat in my toolbox. I do have a chat system, but I don't know if that's just for myself and Steve. But um, we'll try and figure that out for next time. This is only our third one. We haven't actually figured out everything yet. But yeah, feel free to ask questions. Uh, we'll try and sort the chat out later. There might be a chat actually on the Google events page if you're watching there. So I think there might be a chat system in there. So just have a look around. Uh, and if you find out, let me know. <laughs> Okay, that's it. We got it now, Steve. <clears throat> okay, can you see that now? Yeah, we can see that. Okay, uh, okay. so we have the uh, rig, the same uh, regular layout as 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 before. We've got the project up here. The properties grid down here has changed slightly. That's because he had to basically re-implement re it because there is no native property grid on Mac or the Linux. Yeah, I remember doing the G GDK Sharp version uh, when I did the Mac port. That was that was painful. 
<laughs> so hopefully he didn't have too bad a time with that. <laughs> it's it's actually working quite 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 good. Um, one of the issues that we came across in the discussion forums earlier this week was in the previous version, the color key could not be uh, mod mod modified. So here is okay. the color key, and we can now modify the color key. Yeah, I think in the previous version you had to type the values in or something like that. I can't remember. Or if it if it, it might have dropped down the RGBA values, but you couldn't have done something with them. I don't remember, but that definitely looks like a a, a vast improvement over what we had before. Yes, it uh, works better now. So do we know what library they're using, he, he used in the end? to, uh, to write? Uh, e e Eto, E-T-O. E-T-O forms. Okay, yeah, I've heard of that one. Okay, so guys, if you're, if you're interested in a, a cross-platform UI tooling, E-T-O forms might be a good, uh, good thing to look at. If anyone is feeling daring enough to try and figure out how to embed a mono game, game window into E-T-O forms, let us know. Um, that's a nice little side project if someone can get that working. I'm sure the people that like to do their editors would love you if you did that. Uh, one thing okay. that Crazy showed was he embedded the pipeline tool into Xamarin Studio. Yes, I did see that. That looked pretty cool. I did something similar when we first started looking at the pipeline tool, but I think the way he did it was much better because it was, it was uh, down one of the sides, wasn't it? As opposed to being in the main editor window, yeah, it's just like another um, uh, tool window. Okay, that's cool. So, I mean, that's that's obviously one thing that's been going on uh, last month. Uh, there is one other thing, which is the, re the complete the replacement of OpenTK. <laughs> yeah, replacing OpenTK with S S SDL two, which is just a, a small small job. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't a small job. <laughs> <laughs> I just like to shout out actually uh, to uh, Harry and uh, oh, I can't remember the other guy's name now. Mister Mr. Helmet, I think his name is. Who've been we've uh, Thomas. Probably been helping out Thomas. That's it. Uh, we've been working on the SDL stuff and the OpenTK replacement for probably about a couple of months now. But it's looking really, really good. Um, they've helped out a lot from. We've actually, believe it or not, written all of our own OpenGL and OpenAL bindings. It must be crazy to do that. <laughs> I don't know what possessed me to do that. But, no, um, just but yeah, have full, full control now. Yeah, so we have full control. Um, that's currently only going to be in this. Uh, we've got a PR up. I think that's going to go in next week or so. That's only for the desktop GL platform. I do have a plan to migrate both iOS and Android over to using our own op OpenGL bindings as well. Um, in fact, we're going to migrate all of our OpenGL pl platforms over to using the new stuff. So that's that's what we're going to do. So that's a really exciting thing. For me, it is right. anyway. Um, hash defines through the code. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're in control of the, the, the bindings now. So we've got a whole bunch of locations where we've got Ish, if hash if GLES do this, otherwise do the other thing because the return types or the output types are different. So you don't really want to do that. But um, yeah, hopefully we can get rid of all of that if all goes well, which is there's quite a, cool. There's a there's been quite a large large discussion on the uh, GitHub issue. Yeah, yeah, it's it's, it's quite good actually um, having having that kind of discussion though. Um, it means you get other people's opinions, which is quite nice. Yes, yeah, so there's been a lot of a lot of, act, lot of activity on that issue, which is which is good. It's moving forwards. Yeah. So hopefully, um, th well, I think the the milestone is the three point six release, which is in July. Was it June or July? We're doing three point six. Uh, June. June. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. I better start working on <laughs> and iOS and Android then, didn't I? <laughs> I think the deadline was to get rid of all of it by by three point six. So we'll see how that goes. Okay, so um, people, I think, were we, when we did the poll, they were interested in asking in in knowing about some best practices that we as Monogay maintainers could uh, impart on them 
when they're porting or creating their games from mono game on from scratch or from an XNA project. So I know you've got a little list, haven't you, of some of the things you wanted to mention? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, I have a list here. On paper, I'm old, old, old school. Oh wow, you printed it off. I've just got mine in the Google do in, in the Google Doc, so I'm just going to read it off off the web page. <laughs> Um, <laughs> you yeah, got really old school that, on me. This is one that you added was uh, think cross plat platform. Yeah, um, one of the one of the things that will bite people, and I've come across this when I ported games um, for others on more than one occasion, is they start using things like System IO quite a lot in their code. A lot of platforms don't have that. I mean, iOS and Android do. Um, obviously, desktop do, so Mac, Linux, and that is fine. But when you start looking at UWP or stuff like that, they tend to have different ways of accessing the local file system. Um, so that's that's one of the major areas that I always hit. The other, the other thing is to do with threads. Um, obviously, in the new .NET 4.5 and above world, people tend to use tasks instead of threads. So that's that's the kind of things that I tend to hit when I'm when I'm doing ports for people, because uh, they obviously use System IO to read a file from the content directory directly rather than going through the content project or the content system, um, which is always a bit of a pain in the backside. Uh, and obviously, uh, yeah, tasks is is if you want to do any backgrounding stuff, system threading is is nice and handy. But if you just be aware that you might have to use a task instead if you port to Windows 10. And bear in mind, UWP works on Xbox people. So, you know, there's a really good reason to do UWP nowadays. So it's just one yeah. of those things is to, is to bear in mind. There's still that uh, outstanding challenge from the last live Hangout where we challenged someone to, or you challenged someone to get connect working in a UWP app on Xbox One. I did. We haven't had didn't any I, takers for it yet. No, we haven't. And um, I believe there was a T-shirt up for grabs. There is. Yeah, I noticed I'm not wearing my Monogame T-shirt. I know one of our viewers is, but um, I'm not wearing mine. I'm wearing my Evolve T-shirt, so, which is <laughs> which is quite good. My um, Monogame T-shirt is upstairs where the wife and kids are, are asleep. I just like to remind everyone, it is 2 a.m. here. It's 2 a.m. <laughs> yeah, so we're not going to stay on that long. It's not going to be an hour long one today because Steve needs to get some sleep. Um, the other one that I got in my list was uh, I tend to use shared projects for all the game code these days. I did start looking at PCL um, back in the day when it first came out, but I actually prefer shared projects these days principally because you can make use of partial classes and things like that and it it means you can fix some of the issues with like system io and threading and stuff like that by making use of partial classes or even hash defines uh pcls are a bit restrictive in that 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 department in my my opinion but what's your opinion on pcls versus shared projects steve i personally have not used uh used pcls much at all, I've used shared shared projects a lot, as in sharing sharing code between. Or are you talking about the these new type of shared project? Is it? I, I'm talking about the new shared projects. I'm not talking about folding. New shared project. Okay, <laughs> um, I'm old school, and I would share code between uh, different platforms using multiple projects, but they'd all be sharing the same same code. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's really old school. <laughs> I, yeah, but, uh, I mean, these days I'm getting old. Yeah. Well, you know, you got you got to keep reading. Um, the nice thing, I think, the nice thing about both PCLs uh, and uh, and shared projects is uh, we do have templates for those. I believe we certainly do in Xamarin Studio. I'm not too sure about Visual Studio. Um, but we definitely got templates. So if you want to, if you want to explore 
share projects or PCLs, go for it. Um, one interesting thing is PCL support, as Simon will be very happy to hear, is going to be officially released in 3.6. We've actually got it building on our build system now. So the PCLs for Monogame Framework and the pipeline tool will be available as new get packages um, from the 3.6 release onwards in the stable channel. Here, Simon, you're in from here. Yeah, yeah, it, it's he's closer to me than he is to you, but it wouldn't surprise me if you could hear him uh, cheering for that because he, he did put a lot of work into into the PCL stuff. Um, but you can get those through the through the beta channel for the pre-release channel and you get if you want to have a play with them, which is cool. Um, yes, Simon, we do want to kill all the hash hash ifs in the project if we can. Oh, centralized core. Yeah. We'll talk about that in the next one, Simon. We'll get you on and talk about that, shall we? <laughs> okay. Okay, it's out of your list now, Steve. <laughs> the uh, next one on the list is something that came up uh, a couple of week, weeks ago, was the hidden memory allocations that the compiler can make for, for you. Uh, in particular, using using functions that have a variable number of of variable number of parameters and for people who are unfamiliar with this i've set up a little sample case here so excellent if you can see this it's uh using an example where we might be using uh, set render targets. So we want to set two ren render targets for various shader shader effects. What you notice is it is using the params type as actually a render target bindings array. What the compiler does behind the scenes with this is it actually creates a render target binding array for us. And then it will set each, of, each element of that array So you think you might be calling a simple function, but what you're actually doing is allocating an array every time you, you call it. So what you want to do is you want to preempt the compiler. You want to allocate that array yourself and reuse it. So what I've done here, I've Put the array declaration into the top of the class so it gets allocated when the class is created. We just set the elements of the array, no more memory allocations behind the scenes. Okay, that's quite a, quite an interesting little little side case. Um, is that just a mono game issue, or, or would that have been an issue with the original X and A as well if you did that? No, one of the other things you do if uh, say we want to do dot right line okay, we're doing two things and we want to print a integer and a float that is also a params but what's worse is this one is a params uh, object array so what that is doing is it is allocating an array, an object array, and then boxing the integer and the float and putting them into the array. Okay, that's bad. I know boxing is bad. <laughs> so, it, yeah, it's actually allocating memory on the heap to put a one into it and allocating memory on the heap to put 2.0 into it and then passing that array to console right, right line. So every time you call, call that, that's allocating mem 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 memory. 
which then has to be garbage, garbage collected. Uh, okay, so it's it's not just our thing; it's just general a general thing. If you've got a method that uses params, you need to be very careful about how you use it. Otherwise, you could be um, allocating memory where you don't need to. Yeah. We've got a link for those of you um, uh, watching. There's a link in in the uh, quick Q and A section to uh, Roslyn CLR heap allocator analyzer. I've not actually used that, but it might be worth a look. If you do have memory problems, it might be look having a look at that. Um, if someone can that blog looks, about how to use, yeah. That looks looks like an interesting tool. Yeah, if someone could blog about using that with Monogame, that'd be great. Well, I'll make sure we get you, we get your tweet out of it at least. <laughs> uh, the next tip is Always dispose of your resources. Now, this yeah. is in particular a monogame issue because we're dealing with a lot of uh, native unmanaged GPU resources. And a lot of the graphics APIs, OpenGL in particular, do not like it when you do stuff on other threads. And if you don't dispose of your resources, such as textures loaded through uh, from from stream. If you don't call dispose on those explicitly, the finalizer will call dispose, and that is called from the garbage collector thread, which is not the same thread that was used to create the resource. And then things go boom. Ah, uh, so yeah, you have to. Is that generally on shutdown, or it might be if you're say switching out scenes and trying to unload content i guess so if you just say you had a scene which had a bunch of textures in it and you're just moving to a new one and that one is then going to get disposed by the gc automatically you might hit this issue yes yes yeah okay so that, that's that's a good tip i think um i'd imagine that would cause some really weird stuff <laughs> it causes crashes after the fact so you've finished using the texture and it's only when the garbage collector kicks in and tries to free up the object or free up the memory allocation. It calls the finalizer, which calls dispose because you didn't call it. And then that's not done on a different thread. So uh, OpenGL needs the context, the OpenGL context to be current on, on that thread. But we don't know this happening. so. It tries to do something on a thread that OpenGL doesn't know about. Yeah, doesn't our um, doesn't our thread disposal uh, have a? I know with the SDL stuff, we have we're now marshalling all the resource allocations onto the UI thread in the desktop GL, which we weren't before. We were having a shared shared context. We um, are we still doing that for the disposal? We try to to the best of best of our. Our, our ability, but it doesn't always go to plan. It doesn't oh, always okay. work. So people, I think what we're, what we're saying there is if you get some weird crashes, uh, look at your own code before we look at ours, maybe. <laughs> when, <laughs> let's say our code is perfect. <laughs> no, it's getting better. It is getting better. That's good. I remember what it looked um, like five years ago when I first started on this. It was horrendous. <laughs> I think I think we all came onto the project around the same same time. Yeah, I, I think, think it so. Was it's probably around the same time as so we all all joined the project, and we're still here. We must be crazy. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving, Moving on. on. Yes. <laughs> uh, the next tip is use the content pipe pipe pipeline. It is it is there to be used. It is there to uh, massage assets into the most appropriate format for loading efficiently at run runtime. I've seen a lot of people still uh, loading uh, textures through uh, from from stream because they don't want to use the uh, content pipeline. However, then you lose out on uh, texture texture compression, uh, MIP maps. Uh, everything else that the content pipeline can do, including uh, custom content pipeline extensions to format 
your own assets into say a binary format that the game can easily use yeah i'm, I'm 100 percent with you on this one <laughs> i have seen people in, in 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 the past use a texture for for uh, for collision de, de, de detection okay and yeah this will be moving on to something that i believe uh, you have been working on recently <laughs> yeah we'll talk about that because the, the the next one of the one of the tips we've got after that is is kind of relevant to that er little area but um but yeah i've i've done a couple of game ports where uh, people weren't weren't using the texture to the to the content pipeline they were just loading the pngs manually originally when one game came out we had the ability because we didn't have a content pipeline to load native assets through content load I think we're deprecating that or removing that at some point and now we've got the content pipeline in pa place so um, I've got a blog post uh, infinite space studios.co.uk that details why you should use the content pipeline um, the the main reason is for efficiency uh, if you've got a you know a, a texture is going to be a lot smaller take up a lot less gpu if it's compressed than it would if you had a png because it has to unpack that thing into raw in, into a raw tech raw pixel data and you're going to probably taken up four or five times more gpu memory than you need to um so the content pipeline is there it's it's cool it's easy to use a lot easier to use than it used to be um oh, yes. and i'll i'll we'll talk about extensions in a second uh, once we get on to the the next bugbear that <laughs> that steve hates i hate this bit as well this is one of my rants i'm gonna try not to rant though <laughs> uh most most gpu drive drivers expect data to go one way and that is from your code to the graphics card they're not that good or they don't really they really don't don't like it when you try to pull data back and a lot of people use a uh, texture 2d get 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 data to read a, a texture and that's what um in reference to to what dean was talking about before using uh textures as as collision maps they would call uh, get get data at run runtime and then process the byte array that came that came back but what that does is it stalls the graphics pipeline on the card to in order to send that data back to the back to the C, cpu where what you can actually do is use the content pipeline create a custom content pipeline extension process that texture into an easy to use byte array that the game can use a lot more a lot more efficiently and uh i believe dean you have a a demo of this i do indeed <laughs> you, I, I saw your document yesterday and i thought you know what you know what i'm gonna i'm just gonna do that so um so let's let's see we're gonna have an, a little content pipeline extension thing so hopefully you can see me and it's not infinite <sighs> right okay so um i've got a project here we're in xamarin studio on the mac this is xamarin studio 6 so we've got the lovely dark theme which i quite like what i've done here is we've created a new pcl project um that i've just called mg desktop pipeline this this is for the the test app that we're doing and I've added a reference to uh, the portable class library, Monogame and Content Pipeline Portable, which is which I mentioned earlier. So doing a doing a um, a pipeline extension requires a couple of bits to be in place. You, if you're going to do your own importer, you need an importer, but at the very least, you need a processor, some kind of class which describes what you're going to write out and read in, a data writer. Um, and a reader so in this case what we want to do is we want to take a texture go through all the pixel data and for any transparent or non-transparent pixel we build up a little array which says which bits are transparent and which bits aren't so we can then use that in the game for pixel data 
for um, collision data. Uh, this basically means that we don't have to call get data <laughs> on the texture once it's loaded. Um, I did. Uh, the, the other thing is that get data is it's really slow and it's also not supported on various platforms. I think I've got a Kindle Fire somewhere where I tried to use get data and it just blew up. So um, if you are pointing to Android, that could be a problem. Well, so the IPGL ES2 does not support getting anything back from the GPU and yeah. we use various hacks and work workarounds to get I think it we used a, a frame buffer or a render buffer hack to try and get that working. Um, hack is a nice nice word for it. Yeah. Well, did we drop down to GL get pixels? No, that's not supported, is it? So that's fine. Anyway, so um, I've, I've described this data, it, all this little collision uh, class here. It just, it's got a width and height. It's got a byte array for the data. And it's got, um, in this case, we've got an external reference to a texture 2D. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, we're going to load this data at runtime. So we'll have two XMB files. We'll get spat out from this. We'll have the, um, the XMB file, which will claim, contain the collision data. And then we'll have within that an external reference to another XMB file, which will have the texture in it. So that's what this is going to be doing. So the first thing we do is we've got this little processor class which just arrives from content processor. I don't know why my uh, uh, syntax highlighting isn't working. Um, it seems to think there's an error for everything, but it's building. That's very weird. Um, so we derive from content processor. We're actually going to make use of, we're not doing an importer because we're just going to use the normal texture content. And then we're going to be outputting this collision data class, which we just looked at. And as you can see, all we're doing is we just grab the grab the the texture, we grab the image, and then we just loop through all the pixels, check the alpha, and we build up this array here of whether it's transparent or not. Um, and then we make use of the content process to then build the actual texture here, um, which in this case is going to spit out something called. So if this was called icon. .xmb, this is going to spit out something called um, icon texture.xmb or something like that. Um, and then we, we return this collision data class with all the properties set um, out of the processor. That will then pass this on to the data writer. Uh, and this is where you basically, it's a binary writer at the end of the day. You're writing a binary stream. So we write out a bunch of int32s which define the width, height, and the length of the, the collision data. We then write the data out, and then we write this external reference. Um, this is so when we actually load it back in, it will know where it needs to get its bits and bits and pieces from. Um, you have to provide these two methods here, the runtime type and the runtime reader. If you're doing cross-platform, very important note, this assembly name has to match. So by default, when you create, say, an Android project, in this case, if I created an Android project and I called it MG desktop gl dot droid that would be the name of the assembly i'd have to go in and change the project so it would be outputting something which would be mg desktop gl so it matched the reason for that is because it embeds this information into the xmb and if you can't look up this uh, this assembly it won't find anything so that's that's basically the content writer so that's the pcl um, we can build that and then we reference that from the from the content project, which I'll show in a minute. And then on the other side of things, this is the runtime section. This is really easy. So we have our little collision texture class here, which we defined in the data writer, just there. And then we have this collision data reader, which we defined in there as well. Um, so what the content pipeline will do, it will find this class, it will pass in the information. So we get this content reader, which is basically a binary reader at the end of the day. And we start reading the values out that we did. So we read the int32s for the width, height, and the length, go and grab all the texture data, uh, the transparency data, and then we go and load the texture as the external reference. And what we end up with is this little class that has the width, the height, the data, which is our collision data, and the texture. And this is basically, I'll just show you very quickly how we load this. So I declare it. Um, and then we load it. So it's just like normal, except instead of passing a texture 2D, we pass, pass our 
collision texture class in, which we just did. That will load that, and then we can make use of, uh, in this case, I'm just drawing the icon. So as you can see, we've got all the properties off here. So that texture will be populated. So the interesting thing is obviously we've got this, this pipeline extension. How do we reference that from the content MGCB file? Um, if you're doing it by hand, there's a section in the ref here for references. I just reference the, the output for bin debug. So you just reference the assembly, that's fine. Um, and then later you just set the processor to uh, the collision processor, which is what we defined here. Alternatively, you can actually use the pipeline tool uh, to do all this. So you can go to content, come down to references. This is the old version. Hopefully this still works. As you can see, it's got this reference in here already, where you can go and search for another one and add it. So that's how you deal with the references. And then as normal, select the icon PNG. And instead of using a normal texture content processor, I'm going to use my collision processor. And as you can see, even the custom ones, they appear, <clears throat> they appear in the tool. So um, if, you, if you're tempted, if you're tempted to use get data in your game, please don't. Um, I'm probably going to open source this. I'll, I'll post this up on, on GitHub somewhere. Oh, great. And I just broke something. <clears throat> Typical. Can't see that running. <laughs> oh, I know what that is. I know what that is. It's a, this is a bug that I've seen every now and then. Never mind. It does actually work, guys. Of course it does. Of course it does. You, ne you never, ever, ever demo stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like I said, I'll make that I'll make that code available to people so they can have a look. Um, but uh, basically, pre-process as much as you can. If you're using XML files, don't don't load XML files at runtime, please. Uh, it's not good. Maybe maybe during development is fine, but if you want to get you know decent load times, switch over to using some kind of binary format, and the content pipeline can help you with that. It can turn that lovely XML into even lovelier byte arrays and things, and then you can just stream it all in, which is be really nice. And so when that's, loading, uh, the, loading the XML, it's what a whole lot of strings. How much garbage yeah. does that create? <laughs> Yeah, it's loads of garbage. It's it's doing a whole bunch of string processing and parsing and all that kind of stuff. Yes, they're fast, but if you're targeting mobile platforms, you really don't want to be doing that. Um, so yeah, uh, try and use the content pipeline as much as possible. If you want to know more about the content pipeline, just let us know. Um, we'll do another. We can do another more in-depth session, maybe next month on that. That was very very quick, like five minutes. Um, which is probably doesn't do it justice, <laughs> to be fair. Um, you can do but yeah, a lot, if you... a lot with the content pi pipeline, it is uh, very extensible and very power, very powerful. And I think we've got you to thank for that, Steve, because I seem to remember your fingerprints are all over the Monogame implementation of the content pipeline. I did a whole lot of the uh, stubbing out of classes at at the at the start. <laughs> Oh, so you just—it's basically a lot of um, throw, not not implemented exceptions. That's your code. Isn't it? <laughs> At the very beginning, yes. <laughs> but yeah, there, I did put a whole lot of work into the into the start of that of the content pipeline. Okay, cool. Right, so we've got a whole bunch of we've got a lot of questions actually, which is great. I like I like lots of questions. Um, so we'll just go through um, some of these. Yeah, we're actually going to be finishing up in a bit. Alexo, La I don't know if that's pronouncing that right, but no, we're going to be finishing up in probably about five minutes because Steve needs to get to sleep, unfortunately. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay, so um, Mike is asking, I'm considering Monogame versus Cocos 2DX. I prefer C Sharp, but I'm a little concerned about things like particle systems, physics, UI elements, like buttons and scrolling lists. All of these are provided by Cocos 2DX. Any mono, mono game comments on this? Do you want to uh, do you want to take this one, Steve? <laughs> oh, there's uh, there's actually quite uh, quite a few libraries out there written by people that 
supply um, uh, UI elements that supply uh, physics. Uh, I've used, I've personally used uh, Farsia for 2D physics and uh, what's I've the... used Farsia, Farsia and I've used Box Do. Box 2D as well. There's a C sharp implementation of Box 2D in yeah. the uh, Coco Sharp repo, I think. Uh, that I use Bepu as well. Physics is the 3D physics solution I've used. Oh, 3D physics. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, uh, Be 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 physics. Oh, is that a C sharp system? Is it? Use that for the Toy Soldiers game I uh, did on Win uh, Windows Phone. Oh, very nice. Very nice. I didn't know about that. If you get a link, let us know and we'll post it on the YouTube channel because um, that be, might might be worth a look. Um, and, uh, I mean, to, particle, to, uh, particles particle systems, physics. Uh, one of the uh, shout outs I've got coming up will show you some particle systems. OK, I, I think that the main thing is none, a lot of this stuff isn't built into Mono Game. It's a low level framework. On which you build on but there are lots of libraries out there that um, are built on top of this stuff one one really popular library is monogame extended um they've they've got a uh, they're, they're quite good and what they're doing is they they take the basics of monogame and they've extended it so they've got sprite management and animation and tile maps and all that kind of stuff so have a look at monogame extended that's a, a really good kind of third-party library that sits on top of one game there's also coco sharp one of, that, one of the things that we don't want to do is to dictate to you what physics library to use or what ui li library to use uh, if we were to include physics or ui in mono game it would have to be one li one library and we don't want to tell you what to use yeah so it's it's a bit uh, mono game tool, it traditionally have been a bit quite low level. We will provide sound input graphics, and that's about it. Yeah. But that, like I said, it, there's a good community out there. So, um, Mike, uh, we're certainly welcome. Ha have a chat. Go, come onto the Jitter channel. Actually, we've got a Jitter channel for mono game. Um, Jitter dot im. Don't know what the, the URL is, but it's on our it's on our web page. Uh, have a chat around. Find out what people are using. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, if you like C Sharp, if you like Cocos 2D, check out Coco Sharp. Um, it's it's produced by Xamarin. It's based on Mono Game, but it's got all the Cocos 2D stuff. So, uh, and it includes physics and actors and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, that might be worth a look as well. So, hopefully, uh, that answers your question. Uh, the next one, what we got? So, Mono Game on the Hololens. <laughs> Yes, um, I don't know if those of you that follow me on Twitter, but when I was at Evolve the other week uh, in uh, Florida, I'd managed to get my grubby little hands on a HoloLens for all of about 30 seconds. And I managed to deploy and build and deploy a mono game UWP app to the HoloLens. And it just worked, guys. No problem. The only thing I needed, to, and I think we need to figure out is how to make the mono game window fully transparent so that you can um, do put your 3D stuff on there, uh, which is cool. But otherwise, I had the game, I had the Cornflower Blue window. Actually, no, was it Cornflower Blue or did I do? I think I did Mono Game Orange, actually. Um, you have to find, find, go to my Twitter, Twitter feed down here. It's, I, I, did, I did tweet about it, but yes, it works. Um, so. Very nice, the, very nice. The HoloLens is, is very good. So yes, Simon, obviously, yep, HoloLens. Um, so we can do all that. So that, what we got here? And yes, Shmuley, we um, bring it back memories of 2012. <laughs> yeah, there's lots of them. OK, so we've got a, a question from Sean. Uh, using shared projects, what is, uh, is there a good way to share content and content pipeline files across each platform? without maintaining unique files for each platform. Yes, that does make sense. And what I'm going to do, let's see if, can I? The interesting thing, Sean, is that you can, believe it or not, actually add the content MGCB file to the project, to the shared project, 
and set it as long as it's got a, a build action of uh, mono game content reference i believe it's called it should it should just work now in xamarin studio if you add your content mgcb file to your shared project and give it the the right uh, build action it will show up in the ide which is quite nice visual studio unfortunately it doesn't like custom build actions so it decides to hide it from you even though it's there and you might have to the, the hack the project file a bit now one workaround for that is to add the content mgcb file twice once with the correct monogame action and uh, which is uh, monogame content reference and the other with just a build action of none that seems to fool visual studio into letting you <laughs> letting you see the file in the ide so at least you can click on it and then ed edit the thing without having to go to the file the directory itself um hopefully if if we pester the visual studio team enough they might allow for um, custom build actions in share projects which is the reason why it, it doesn't work that one xamarin studio does support it so hopefully visual studio will support it at some point but yes, you can definitely put your content MGCB files in the shared projects and work from there. The other way, if you don't want to do that, is just have one content MGCB file and just link it. So it doesn't have to be in the project directory. When you add the file, you can just say add as link and, and change it. And then um, that will work as well. So there's a couple of ways of doing that. Um, I don't think, do you know any other, Steve? Or is that, that's basically? Uh, the only other thing I was going to add was uh, the, in the content project, there is a platform setting. If you build the content project through Visual Studio, and I believe through Xamarin Studio as well, it will override that platform setting with the platform that you are bu building. Yes, yeah, yeah so that, that, that works on, that on all the platforms mainly affect uh, content that is built differently for each platform. So uh, sound effects, textures, main, mainly, they may get, may get compressed differently. Um, that's where that comes into play. Yeah, so um, for example, if you're building for iOS, the texture compression will be PVRTC. So, uh, and the content pipeline will handle that. So when you're building your iOS project, it will pass in the platform that you need. And it'll say that yeah, this is an iOS, and it will do the do the right thing in that case and give you compressed PVRTC textures. But yeah, so so it is all, all possible. Um, like I said, if you've got any other questions, just hop on the JIT channel. That's quite a, a good place to ask questions, or uh, on the forums, which is quite cool. Everyone's uh, very helpful, which is nice. So uh, <clears throat> okay, we got some Simon's doing some stuff. So I'm just going to add something to the Monogame wiki. Excellent. Thanks, Simon. <laughs> I think he just volunteered. Yeah, I, 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 I like I volunteering Simon for things. <laughs> we should get Simon on here, actually, at some point, so he can talk about the stuff that he, he does, because he does a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, blogging um, there you uh, go. about stuff, about Monogame and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, live now, hang out number four. Might get Simon on. Okay, so actually, um, he's he, he, well. There you go. He's he's already written about content pipeline extensions several times as well. <laughs> so, Simon, do you want to uh, do you want to pop in a link uh, into the into the Q and A system, and then people can have a have a look, or at least wait wait until the the video of this hangout is posted, and then feel free to post links and things in the chat or the channel. Um, and that'll be that'll be quite cool. Uh, so people can actually keep up on that. So we're out of questions, um, and we're running over time, which hopefully yeah. people won't mind. So I think there were some you had some shout outs you wanted to to give, wasn't yeah. there? Yeah, um, some people doing showing some great great work on uh, to Twitter. So we will just go to where's our window. You're not sharing your screen yet. There we go. There we go. Now, uh, Cosmonaut was uh, mentioned last last uh, hang, hang, hangout, and he has continued to post some wonderful 
uh, screenshots of his uh, in-progress game called Bounty, Bounty Road. Hey. Okay, yeah, I've seen this. This is quite an interesting project, this one. Mentions that the driver and gunner are just play placeholders. I think there's quite a, a nice visual style there. Yeah, he's doing some really cool stuff with shadows. I think we mentioned uh, we mentioned him last time, but he's he's done some. Was this the guy that had the problem with the render target? Uh, yes, the set render target thing. So oh, yes, okay, so it was him that found the issue. Excellent. Okay. I believe he blogged about the 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 background behind that as well. So if you want to uh, check out some more detail about that particular issue that Steve mentioned earlier about the Prams array, um, check out this guy's website. He's, he, he blogs about bits and pieces that he's been finding. And uh, James Cost was also mentioned in the last Hangout, and he has just continued to post uh, more and more. Uh, Yeah, yes, it's uh, like a really cool game. Yeah, James, less phallic is 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 good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, this game actually looks really interesting. So it looks really smooth and a nice old ret retro style. Yeah, it's quite good. I know he he blogged about um, taking going from Android and iOS to desktop GL the other week because he had a few issues that we that. Uh, we managed to sort out with him but um, that was quite an interesting blog post because most people usually go the other way from desktop to mobile but he's coming back from from the other way but um but yeah again that's he, he, he blogs some nice stuff about um his experiences yeah. with one a game one of his so, other blog posts is also how he makes all these uh, uh wonderful gifs for his uh, tw tw twitter feed Yeah, that's always a bit of a pain. I, I, I try to do that a couple of times. Um, uh, find a decent uh, GIF kind of recorder. But uh, but yeah, that's um, that's an interesting blog post, that one. Had something to do okay. with using QuickTime, I think. Yeah. Uh, move, moving on, I just wanted to shout out to Team Ant Mount Mountain, who has been uh, posting some uh, pictures of their up upcoming game. And that's that's not his game. This is the one with the par particle system. They've written their own particle system and uh, particle ed ed editor. Wow, that's pretty cool. So that's just their in progress editor. Every particle system editor I've seen has lots and lots of fields. There yeah, I think it's so things you can tweak on a particle system. Yeah, the day someone comes up with a really, really nice um, uh, particle system editor, that'll be, <laughs> that'll be fun. For those of you that are interested, uh, Simon's just posted the link in the, in the questions to his blog. So uh, check that out if you want some um, more information about content pipeline stuff. Uh, the last one I was going to shout out to was uh, Matt Matt Swift, who's got an in progress game called Re Renium, which has some fantastic two uh, D lighting and sh sh shadowing uh, uh, visual effects. You know what? They, I think he posted an Elite Dangerous poster uh, picture earlier up on his feed. <laughs> Or some kind of space that's game. Yeah. Game. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna say that's not his game. He didn't write that. <laughs> Frontier Developments wrote that. No, uh, it's a. Uh, this one looks it's got a great visual style to it. And he's done really well with the uh, lighting and sh 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 shadows. Where's some of these other Where's one with lots of lights? Okay, Mike. Mike just posted a, a nice link to a particle editor uh, in the current questions. We need to get figure out the chat sim system for next time. Um, so if you if you're interested in particle stuff, have a look at that as well. So that's cool. Uh, 
Okay. There we go. Back to back to me. So and you're back. Just finishing up and uh, moving on to tag tag it onto that uh, hollow lens uh, comment be before. Uh, hollow lens is not the only uh, VR or uh, AR system out there. There's the uh, Gear VR. There's Oculus Rift. Uh, we want to see people making games for those too. So if you've got one of those, one of those uh, head, 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 headsets, uh, we want to see what 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 you've done if you've used a mono game. Do you, do you think we should offer a T-shirt to the first person? Should we should we should we do make that a thing? I don't know how much money we've got in the coffers because you know we don't. Well, have no any one claimed a T-shirt from the last challenge, so maybe that 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 that, that shirt. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If you're working on if you're working on the connect stuff, guys, you've you've lost your chance. So it's, it's it's VR next. So, but yeah, if if someone can get um get mono game working on one of the VR devices, that'd be great. I was gonna uh, back in the day, I was gonna play with Google Cardboard. But I, I don't think it would be very good. It might be, but I think Oculus or, or something might be better. If you already ha if you already have a T-shirt, then um, is it a new one? Because we changed the design. If you've already got a new one, that I don't know if. Well, no. If you do it, then you get another one. That's fine. Or perhaps we'll send you a mug instead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, so there's the challenge, guys. VR. Um, we just uh, uh, some more links to screen to GIF on Coplex.com. That might be works. It's awesome and free, apparently. Um, yeah. So. If there's a VR, VR people, try and get it on that. I think we're gonna we're gonna call it a day because what time is it now, Steve? Exactly. Yeah. So you need to get some sleep because you've got to go to work tomorrow. Uh, and... It's three a.m. and the kids get up at six. Yep, I'm I'm fine. <laughs> that that's that's a normal uh, amount of sleep for a father. <laughs> I, I speak from experience. So um, if you're getting more than four hours sleep as a father then the, can you let us know how <laughs> please <laughs> all right then guys um thanks steve for staying up so late and talking to us it's been great ha having you i think we had some interesting stuff uh, to talk about this time around not too sure yeah. what we're going to do next time we might try and get simon on because he likes to talk about stuff quite a lot um <laughs> He's probably got a lot of experience and, and bits and pieces on using mono game. Or we might get one of the guys that we, we've given a shout out. We might see if we can get um, one of the guys that are actually using mono game to come on and, and give us some information about their experiences and pitfalls and what went right, what went wrong, that kind of stuff. So um, we'll probably uh, put out a, a, a Twitter poll. So keep an eye out for that. Um, and until then, happy coding. And do some great stuff with Mono Game, guys. Thanks for watching. Ciao.